Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm Kelly Walmsley, your host, and I'm joined again today with Dr. Birger Spihus from Norwegian University of Life Sciences. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Pleasure, my pleasure. Um, so this is a second edition of our podcast. Um, we got into talking about particle size of feed, um, the overall particle size of feed, and we were looking more at the macro structure um, and um, you brought up a great point whenever we were talking and saying that the macro structure is, is important, but the microstructure of the pellet is also very important. So can you want to elaborate on that just a little bit? Yeah, I think that, I mean, it's, it's very clear now and there's been enormous amounts of research during the last 30 years, I would say, where really it has been, been, the, the, it has become clear that uh, uh, birds need uh, structure elements. Uh, the gizzard needs something to work on. And um, I think that, uh, uh, it, you know, when we were the poultry industry, at least the broiler industry, came uh, quite late. I mean, and, uh, you guys, uh, the Americans, you, in, you invented the modern broiler chicken and and created a massive industry, a wonderful, successful industry. Uh, but uh, in the beginning, we kind of copied uh, the principles of processing feed from swine, uh, from swine nutrition. And in swine, it's important to grind the uh, cereals very finely because they don't chew uh, the seeds very carefully, the, the pigs. And then uh, so we thought, well, do it with poultry too. But then it was uh, realized that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, and particularly in this in the environment we keep the birds, there isn't really any enough structural elements in the environment that will stimulate the gizzard development. And uh, what happens is that uh, uh, the gizzard uh, fails to develop. It's like, you know, if we go to the gym and exercise, our muscles grow. And it's the same with the gizzard. If it's have to contract, you know, the grinding is taking place in the gizzard and a, a, a well-functioning gizzard is extremely effective. You have this sandpiper-like uh, uh, inside and, you know, wraps the material to a very fine grinding, but it needs to be stimulated. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it was then shown that by stimulating the gizzard, by including, for example, coarse cereal particles instead of finely ground cereals, uh, the gizzard was able to uh, exert its function better. I mean, and so if I can interrupt you for one second, I'm sorry. Yes. So, what do you think? So, when you say coarse versus fine, what are the kind of ranges that you're looking at? Well, I think uh, hard to tell. I mean, but at least larger than one millimeter. But maybe in, at the moment, I'm kind of thinking perhaps. I mean, a significant amount should be larger than two millimeter. I think. I think we should have some really coarse. I, I actually have made my uh, rule of thumb, but it's uh, it's very uh, preliminary because it is hard to pinpoint uh, by looking at literature. But I would say 40% of the microstructure of a broiler diet should be larger than one millimeter. Okay. 40% so of the particles, the pelican system, should be one one, of which 20% should be larger than two. Uh, that's kind of uh, what I I think is good, and it's not it's not easy to achieve that. That is the thing, particularly perhaps with, with maize diets, because they are usually very easily ground to very fine material. Especially if the if it's dry, right? <laughs> Especially if it's dry, and yeah, and anyway, um, unless you use a very large holes in the hammer mill, or you use a roller mill, which is also a very good alternative. So uh, I would say that uh, uh, the, you, you, it's very difficult. And when you pellet, you grind it further down. That is what many people are not thinking about. That's why when we talked in the last episode of, of uh, if you increase the diameter of the hole, you actually preserve more of the large particles. But anyway, the grinding is significant in the pellet press. 
So do you uh, think we have a good handle on the that um, it, of how the magnitude of the impact of what happens in the pelleting process to grind the those uh, the microstructure of the pellet of the ingredients in the pellet? Well, at least we need to be aware of that. Uh, you know, the the microstructure of the diet is not uh, a result of the grinding in the hammer mill or roller mill only, but it's also an effect of the grinding in the pellet press. And then adjustments in the pellet press will actually affect the grinding. For example, the distance between the roll and the die. So there are things there. And of course, as I talked about, the, the, the diameter of the hole in the pellet die. So there are things you can do in the pelleting process to reduce the harm. Because we want the gizzard to, I mean, uh, it, it's good to have coarse uh, structures. And we've seen that, in fact, when you you have more coarsely ground cereal particles or feed particles, in fact, the amount of very finely ground particles in the small intestine increases. It's because it's the coarse particles stimulate the gizzard to develop, and a well-functioning gizzard is a better grinder than any uh, mill in the feed factory. So, uh, so we stimulate the gizzard and actually will end result is actually more fine grinding by more coarse particles in the diet. And of course, at the same time, we save money. <laughs> I'm going to say it's cheaper to grind more coarsely and it's quicker. Yeah. And then, and then the absorption is greater, right? Um, yeah, and then, yeah, and exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So fine. It is good. It is good. The finer the particles are in the small intestine, the better, because the easier, the quicker they will digest. And you know, the broiler chicken is really in a hurry because it has a very high. I mean, extremely high uh, digestion. I mean, a high requirement to absorb a lot of nutrients right. in a rather short so time. You know, one of the criticisms early on about um, kind of going to a coarser grind just in general um, was that the gizzard was going to be working a lot harder. And so then energy is partitioned towards, you know, breaking down feed. And so um, but the data, I mean, regardless, that I mean, that's a that's a true concern. But then the the payoff in the long run, as you said, is that you're getting smaller particle sizes in the small intestine and then increase digestibility. Um, exactly. Yeah, and, and people have been trying to quantify that extra energy. And I, I, I can't recall on my top of my head exactly how much it is, but uh, I think that you know, when you look at feed per gain that is improving and so forth, I mean, that the, the proof is in the pudding, right? So, uh, I mean, uh, feed per gain is kind of the final answer, commercially at least, and when you so many times observed an improvement in feed feed efficiency uh, that indicates that the benefits are higher than the costs. Sure. So where do you think we're at in understanding? I mean, you, you kind of went through a little bit of some preliminary um, ideas that you have or your hypothesis on what that breakdown needs to be on the microstructure of the ingredients that make up the pellet. Um, where do you think we are in terms of being able to kind of get to the optimal um, levels? Well, I, first of all, it's definitely that we, we've been going quite a, a long way. I think, I mean, there's a lot of uh, awareness of this now. Uh, I, think, I think in most, most parts of the world, which is very, very good. But at the same time, you know, there is, there is a challenge in how do we grind coarsely enough <laughs> It is actually a challenge, and there is a worry, and a, 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 a legitimate worry, uh, which is that uh, if you have a very coarse grinding, you will have a poor pellet durability. Uh, but I think it seems to me when I, when I look at the experiments that have been carried out, comparing coarse and fine grind, looking at pellet durability and such things, seems that that is a that uh, aspect is not as important as we maybe think. Uh, it seems like it's not necessarily so that the cause of grinding will result in a poor pellet durability. Besides, we have to remember that when the pellet consists of coarser particles, if the pellet breaks apart, 
it will break apart into larger particles. So uh, there is some, you, you, you know, uh, the, 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 the negative effect may not be that high. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Yeah, but thank you so much for your time, Dr. Fihus, and um, we look forward to um, seeing more research um, in this area and um, maybe follow back up. Thank you very much for the invitation again. Thanks. And uh, we'll listen, hopefully join in on the next uh, Poultry Nutrition Black Belt podcast soon. Thank you all for joining us. Bye. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com and I look forward to hearing from you.